San Antonio, Texas blew us away during our first ever visit, and dare I say, I enjoyed it more than Austin. In less than 48 hours, we visited the most popular tourist attraction in the entire state, the Riverwalk, devoured award-winning Texas barbecue, explored one of the biggest cave systems we've ever been to, and so much more. In this video, I'm going to highlight our entire San Antonio itinerary while sharing useful travel tips to help inspire or plan your next trip to San Antonio. So sit back and relax. This is your travel guide to San Antonio, Texas. For context, this trip is a continuation of our four day road trip that began in Austin, Texas. So feel free to check out my Austin travel guide if you haven't already. On the two hour drive from Austin to San Antonio, we made a stop at Bucky's. If you didn't know, the Bucky's franchise claims the title of having the largest gas station in the entire world. The one we went to was in New Braunfels, and it covers over 66,000 square feet, larger than an entire football field. Beyond fueling for gas, our intended brief stop inside the store quickly ended up being an hour and a half visit as we walked the store aisle by aisle, admiring everything from cheeky Texas souvenirs to all of their merch. Bucky's is known for many things, including but not limited to their jerky, fudge, beaver nuggets, and kolaches. There was no way we could possibly try it all, but in the end, we bought salted caramel and pecan fudge for the road. We also had dinner here and ordered their barbecue brisket sandwich, which they make in-house. Also, a random fact, this location has been voted the best bathroom in America. I didn't film the bathroom for obvious reasons, you'll just have to simply experience it for yourself. Afterwards, we made our way to our hotel at the Hyatt Regency San Antonio Riverwalk. One important thing to talk about is the parking situation, as it was a main concern of mine. In the downtown area, it is common for hotels to charge their guests for overnight parking. For instance, the Hyatt Regency was going to charge us $45 per night, which in my opinion is absolutely criminal. To get around this, I used a website called Spot Angels to find cheap or free metered street parking. With that, we were able to find a spot for both nights only a few blocks away from our hotel and saved us 90 bucks. I'll leave the link to the parking website in the description below. The next day, we woke up early to beat the crowds at the Alamo. The Alamo is a historic Spanish mission and the site of the Battle of the Alamo, an important battle during the Texas Revolution. I'm no history buff, however, so I'll leave it to the museum to inform you about its significance, but it's a must-do experience when in the area. You'll need a ticket to enter the Alamo, which you can get in person at their welcome center. The signage makes it seem like you need to pay to enter by purchasing one of their tour packages, but you can actually enter for free. You just need to simply ask for their free admission. It took us about an hour to learn about its history, walk around the courtyard, and check out their gift shop. By mid-morning, we worked up an appetite and headed to our last Texas barbecue outing, 2M Smokehouse Barbecue. With their pitmaster being a James Beard Award nominee and thousands of raving reviews, this is arguably the best barbecue in San Antonio. This spot made it on Texas Monthly's top 50 barbecue spots in the entire state. Learning our lesson from yesterday's two-hour wait at Interstellar Barbecue, we arrived at the restaurant 30 minutes before they opened and we were about the 10th party in line. 
once opened, we waited only about 15 minutes. We ordered their brisket, ribs, pulled pork, sausage, chicharrones, mac and cheese, and deconstructed elote. You could say that we went all out. Their brisket was the best brisket I had during our entire trip to Texas. Super tender and I recommend getting the fattier cut if possible. Their sausage was also the best sausage I had during our trip. It was their signature serrano pepper and Oaxaca cheese sausage and you can taste both components. The last highlight for me was their mac and cheese. The chicharrones provided a nice crunchy texture that complemented the creaminess of the mac and cheese. I never had anything quite like it before. I also enjoyed the free sides of pico de gallo and pickled onion, a bit of a Mexican flair of which this place draws inspiration from. After a delicious meal, we headed back to the downtown area to the historic market square, which is the largest Mexican market in the US. It's lined with restaurants, shops, and even live music on the weekend. We first checked out the inside market called El Mercado, and there were plenty of souvenirs, and I managed to add a magnet to my growing collection. We then went outside, grabbed a churro, and listened to live entertainment. The historic market square is a shopper's dream, so if that's you, you come to the right place. We also checked out a free art exhibit called Centro de Artes Gallery. My favorite exhibit featured Loteria, a popular traditional Mexican board game of chance. However, the cards displayed here are from the millennial version, which we found very amusing. Overall, the historic Market Square was a welcoming look into and celebration of Mexican culture in San Antonio, and I highly recommend checking it out. Next, we headed back to our hotel at the Hyatt Regency to freshen up. The Hyatt Regency, by the way, was such a pleasant stay and located in the most convenient location in the city, situated right on the Riverwalk itself. What's better is that we got to stay at such a fine establishment like this for completely free by taking advantage of our credit card points and rewards that we have with Chase. What would have been a $300 per night stay came out to be $0. I transferred my points from Chase to Hyatt and redeemed those points at incredible value with my Chase Sapphire Reserve. While finances are not the purpose of this channel, travel hacking with credit card points is such an underutilized tool for maximizing the most out of your travels. Of course, do your own research first, but if you happen to be in the market for the Chase Sapphire Reserve and are looking to unlock great hotel stays for your future travels amongst getting other travel protections, feel free to use the affiliate link in the description box below where I can earn a commission at no extra cost to you. After we freshened up, we took the elevator down and we were instantly transported to the Riverwalk. Believe it or not, the Riverwalk is the number one tourist attraction in the entire state of Texas. While the entire path is 15 miles, the heart of it is only a 1.5 mile loop in the middle of downtown, which is where you'll most likely want to be exploring. The main two ways to view the Riverwalk are one, to walk it, and two, to take a boat tour, and I recommend doing both. The walk itself is very picturesque. You'll walk under bridges, over bridges, 
in the inner path, in the outer path. When you need to cross to the other side, it can feel like a fun little maze. There are plenty of restaurants that have riverside views, and if you can dine outside, that's the way to go. For dinner, we ate at the Iron Cactus. I had the pollo relleno, which was my favorite non-barbecue dish I had during our entire trip. It was chicken breast stuffed with roasted corn, poblano peppers, cheese, onion, and cornbread, smothered in a jalapeno cream sauce served with Mexican rice and seasonal veg. And if you didn't know, San Antonio is the culinary capital of Texas and one of two cities in America recognized as a UNESCO designated creative city of gastronomy. That being said, you have to find the good eats in San Antonio. Afterwards, we made it to our boat tour of the Riverwalk. I highly recommend going at night when the trees are illuminated with bright, vibrant lights. The boat tours are managed by Go Rio, and there are three docking areas along the Riverwalk. You can reserve online or physically at any of the docking areas the day of. Know that the reservations are not time specific, but leave every 15 to 25 minutes. Check out the website in the description below for frequently asked questions and hours of operation. The boat ride was fantastic and we learned a lot about the architecture and history of the city. It was equally informative and hilarious thanks to our guide, Jose. There is a lot to do and see in the Riverwalk, so much so that I'm going to make a completely separate video going over the top attractions and share my own personal tips. When I have that video ready, I will link it in the description below and the corner above, so make sure to subscribe to not miss out on that. We ended the night with a free light show at the San Fernando Cathedral called The Saga. The 24-minute light show consists of projected lights onto the church, which depict San Antonio's history. As of the recording of this video, the showings are at 9 or 9.30 p.m. Tuesday to Sunday. Fun fact, it is the oldest cathedral in the United States. To be quite honest, I found the show a bit lackluster, mostly because there wasn't any narration, only music. So if you don't know much of San Antonio's history, you might be lost on what is actually being depicted. The next day we had breakfast at La Panaderia, a bakery founded in 2014. We tried a few pastries and their ham and cheese croissant sandwich is a must try. The croissant was flaky and buttery, and the ham and eggs were savory, creating a perfect bite. The last thing we did was explore a cave system at Natural Bridges Caverns, just a 40 minute drive out of the city. It's the largest cave system in Texas, and I'm positive it will leave you in awe. They have several tours, but the main one I recommend is the Hidden Wonders Tour. It's about $30 to $35 and lasts about an hour. I'll leave the website in the description below where you can book your tickets. I've been to many caves, both guided and unguided, and this is definitely in my top three. The other two being in Tennessee. Some of the rooms will simply take your breath away. The video recording does not do it justice. A couple of tips, wear light clothing. It's 100% humidity inside even during the cold months and I guarantee you, you will be sweating. Wear shoes with good traction as the floor can be wet in some places and the elevation steep. And make sure to take all the photos you want before heading to the next chamber or room since there is no backtracking on the tour. Beyond the normal guided tours, there's also other activities for the family including panning for gold, 
an obstacle ropes course, and sometimes they even offer live musical events inside the cave. Overall, I highly recommend checking out Natural Bridges Caverns if you are in the San Antonio area as it will delight the entire family and those interested in nature. It certainly exceeded my expectations. So that concludes this two-day itinerary in San Antonio, Texas, and if you made it this far, I assume you found this video helpful, so please give it a like to help my new channel reach more people. Also, make sure to subscribe as I have a couple more videos coming up that you might be interested in, including a full guide to the San Antonio Riverwalk and a hike through the Hamilton Pool Preserve for those wanting to experience a bit more of the nature side of Texas. As always, happy travel planning and see you in the next adventure.